Zero Accounting Software 2023, Enter Billable Time to Projects and Invoice. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the Support Accounting Instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The new company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. We're gonna duplicate some tabs to put reports in by right-clicking the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right-clicking the tab again so we can duplicate it again. Going back to the tab to the left, accounting dropdown, opening up the balance sheet. Then we're gonna to tab to the right and we're gonna to go to the accounting dropdown, opening the profit and loss or income statement. Back to the left tab, changing the date range to 2023 with a custom range change, 2023, end of the year, December 31st. Bring it up to date, por favor. Tab to the right, we've got the correct date range here, so we're good to go. Let's go to the first tab, and now we wanna think about entering billable time that we can then turn around and invoice a client with. Now note, whenever we think about tracking time of say staff, we usually think of payroll, processing the payroll, but for this purpose, we're kind of thinking of us billing or tracking the time so that we can bill it, which is often done in a job cost kind of system. So in our project, we're imagining in essence, the payrolls being done by a third party payroll processor. Clearly, if we pay someone hourly, we would still need to track the time to be processing the payroll on an hourly rate. But oftentimes, uh, if you're in a, a, a situation where you have a job cost system, you might be paying people, people on a, a salaried basis yet still need to track their time so that you can bill the client. So if, if you ever seen The Office, I think the movie The Office where the, the guy's like, I don't care if you're just thinking about a client uh, or whatever, you, you need to bill them. You need to tell us what their billable rate is, right? That's what we're trying to track the time uh, here for. And typically we'll have a projects kind of setup to do that in a job cost system. So when you think about a job cost system, you're looking at longer term projects, Oftentimes construction companies, of course, have a job cost system, but so do many service companies, such as law firms, CPA firms, uh, bookkeeping companies, where you have a partnership set up and you have a lot of staff, and the staff is gonna be working like crazy for all of the different partners on different projects for different clients. And you might be paying all of those staff members salary, but you still need them to track what they are doing per client, per job, so that we can then to gather their information, possibly with an Excel sheet or something like that, or just even write it down or some other kind of software and then put it into our system so that we can bill or invoice the client based on the work that was done. So if I go into my projects here, we can go into say all projects. If you don't have projects turned on, you can go to the drop down here and there's usually a projects on the left. Once you turn it on, you'll have the projects drop down we have in progress these two projects uh open at this point in time we're going to think about entering time into the system that we can then use to invoice the client so you have your timer up top so if i hit the timer this actually runs a timer which is kind of nice if you're actually working real time within zero and you want to track your time as you're going you've got your stopwatch so you can be very specific about it. But oftentimes if you have staff, you, you're gonna have them track their own time and possibly provide it to you. And you might use other software to kind of track the time in a similar kind of fashion so that they have to clock in and out. Or you might, uh, you might just trust them to give you the time and what they were working on and then, and then populate that into uh, the zero uh, system. So 
Then if I hit the projects drop down up top, you've got all projects, you've got the time entries, you've got the staff time overview, you've got the staff permission, you've got the staff cost rates. So let's go into the staff cost rates here because this is one of the components that we're going to need. These are the rates that we can put into the system estimating the cost. Uh, the other side that we need is an actual task that they are working on. So let's go up top and just say if I hit the projects up top and I look at a time entry just to understand the data input and then we'll set up the foundation. If I go into a time entry and I say I, I add a new time entry, what do we need to do that? We need the project. We've got our two projects that we're setting up. Those are the customers we're working on. We need the task. We don't have any tasks yet. The task is similar to like items service items and inventory items that help us to populate an invoice because that will give us the rate that we're actually going to charge that will pull over to the invoice and then the description the duration noting that if you have a system where your staff members are just giving you the time that they worked on a weekly basis you might say take their excel worksheet or whatever they give it to you on and just manually input the the total time for that week on a weekly basis or whatever or you might then enter the start and stop on a on a period by period basis here's the time that you would enter which would calculate the duration for a particular date and then you need to apply out the staff member note that the staff member may be an employee but they don't have to be they might be a contractor or something uh, like that so in order to have the staff members in there you have to add them as a user so how do you add people as a user? You hit the drop down and you go into the settings and within the settings, you go into your users and then you can invite new users here. One of the great things about Zero is I don't believe they have any cap to the number of users that you can have. So you can add more users and then make sure that in the permissions, if I go into the permissions, I have checked off that they're on projects so that they will show up and I can I can have their time entry on the projects, which is neat. All right, so now I'm, I'm gonna hit, so then I'm gonna go back, let's go back to the dashboard or go, let's go back to the projects here. So that means that we need a task uh, that we're gonna assign and then we can also assign the the cost uh, by, by, by giving, entering that on a per person item here. So let's add the task. So if I hit the projects drop down and I say that we're gonna say we've got the the uh, time, let's go to the time entries and now hold on, I'm gonna go into an individual project and then I'm going to this particular project and then I have the add and I have my task that I can add. Now within your task, when you when you're actually uh, going to invoice the client based on time that is worked. There's two ways you can basically add the time. Uh, you, you could just say, I'm just going to bill people based on an hourly rate that I, I have determined on who is working on the task. So in that, in that case, you might call it whatever the person who worked on its name, uh, like in our case, uh, Adam Smith or, 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 uh, are two employees, for example, or you might bill them based on what they actually did, such as they did, you know, an hour's worth of bookkeeping or something like that. And so that way you would you would charge them by the task that they worked on. So if you have a type of business where everybody does the same thing, like guitar lessons, then you might just charge by the guitar instructor because they might have a different rate per instructor. Or if they do a bunch of different stuff as they might do in a law firm, you might just charge by the thing that they did and that would be the name of the task bookkeeping or work on this project or that project or something like that so i'm going to say here that this is going to be just i'll just say staff one rate so we'll say that and notice what's happening here is i'm basically entering like an item here so it's gonna be like a service item so i could use like the hourly rates but i'm just going to call it staff one rate boom and then i'm going to say it's an hourly rate that we're charging 100 dollars. that doesn't mean that we are uh that we are paying them 100 dollars. that's the rate that we're going to pull over to the invoice charging the client for the 100 dollars. so charge uh hourly rate estimated actually estimated hours i'm just going to say 
estimated hours hourly rate, I'm going to say 100 on the hourly rate. Okay, so then I'm going to say save it. And so there we have it. So now if I was to enter a time entry, if I was to add a time entry now, now we have a task that we can add, which is that uh, staff hourly rate. And if I say the duration is, you know, one hour, then that should pull over to something that we can bill or invoice for that 100. Now there's another component that Zero has the ability to do, which is to put the cost for the users, which would, uh, but you have to be careful of that because that's only gonna be tracking internally in terms of the cost on this form and won't be reflected on the financial statement. So for example, if I hit the projects drop down and I wanna look at the staff cost rates, then I can, if these are my two staff members, I can say, let's edit the rate here and I can put in the cost rate. This cost rate isn't what's gonna go on the invoice and it's also not what we actually paid to the staff member, even if they were an employee, uh, because it's just the rate that we're imagining is part of the payroll. So in other words, if I processed payroll right over here, we already have the expense in the payroll expense over here. And what I can do is say, okay, I'm gonna try to determine whoever worked on them, the rate, the amount that of this payroll expense that is gonna be basically allocated to a particular project. So I would determine that by trying to figure out what their hourly rate is generally, as well as possibly including overhead into the cost uh, over here. So it'll show up on my projects, but really it's it's not gonna show up as an expense line item. So you gotta be you know careful of that. And so let's just imagine it was it was sixty dollars, right? It's sixty dollars here, and we're going to charge, you know, a hundred dollars. So let's put that here, and then I can do the same uh, for this one. Let's say this one was, you know, seventy dollars. Seventy dollars. Okay. So now if I go into my projects and look at my all projects, and I go into this, when I add uh, a time, uh, it's going to bill it out at a hundred dollars, but it's going to make a cost of uh, $60 in my project overview over here, which the $60 will not be reflected on the financial statements and the $100 won't be reflected until we invoice it uh, over here on the income statement. All right, let's just do it and we can check that out for ourselves. So let's add, let's add a task. Uh, am I in the right job? So I'm in job 3005. I'm gonna add a time entry so I'm in job 3005. The task is going to be staff rate one, which is basically the uh, billable amount, the, the description. I'll just keep their duration. I'm just going to manually put in the duration of, uh, let's say, I'm just going to say 16 hours. So I'll say 16 hours. I'm imagining I got a timesheet from a staff member showing, showing what they worked for this particular job. And I'm just gonna data input it into the system. You could do it over here with the start and end date, but if you have the timesheet externally, it would be fastest just to data input that in from the Excel worksheet or whatever you received. We're gonna say this happened on January. Let's go to the end of January uh, 31st, let's say. And the staff member is gonna be this one. We'll use that for the staff member and say uh let's do let's do another one too let's do save and another and this one actually i'm in the wrong job so i can't do another in here i'm gonna do the other one for another job so let's close this out and so there we have it so now if i go back to the projects all projects jones there's nothing in here but if i go into my time we have this amount that needs to be built out of the, the 16. And then you can see up top, the time and expenses 1,600, because it's gonna be that 16 hours that we're gonna bill out at the rate that we charged, or we're gonna charge, which is the $100. Nothing has yet pulled over to the income statement, however, because we haven't pulled it over to the invoice yet at this point in time. Quotes and invoices, again, we got the time up top and the profitability. Uh, we have a negative, notice it's actually pulling in the cost 
the cost side it pulled in because it's imagining the cost that we put in, uh, which was uh, like the $60 that we assigned had already been happened because because that happens before we do the invoice. The, the imagine process would be the work that was already done. But remember that cost really is reflecting uh, this wages that is already in place in essence, right? So it's not actually recording something to the financial statement on the cost side as the revenue will when we make the actual invoice. All right, let's go to the other job and do the, do a similar process. I'm gonna go to, uh, let's go to all projects again. And then I'm gonna go to the projects again and say that we have time entries. So let's go into a time entry and we're gonna say new time entry. And this is gonna be for Sam the Guitar Man project and the task uh we don't have notice i have to add the task for sam if we're going to use that same task in multiple projects we might want to go to the business drop down and see if we can add it to the products and services so if i go into the products and services then we can we can add basically an item these are the items typically that populate on an invoice and let's see if we can add it here i'm going to say a new item up top and then I'm going to say the code is going to, I'm just going to say uh, employee or staff work one. And that's going to be the code, the name, and then purchase. We don't have any purchase. We're not tracking inventory. I'm just going to say the price is 100. And the account that we're going to hit is when we have the income side is going to be service income. So we'll say service income. It's going to be tax exempt. And so that looks good. Let's go ahead and save that. And so then if I go back into my projects, hitting the project dropdown and say all projects, going to the 4002 project for Sam the Guitar Man. And if I wanted to add a task, then I could choose the task, which is going to be the staff uh, staff work, which now populates down here. It's because and now I can set that one up across all the projects and it should populate properly giving us the hourly rate of the $100. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay and then if I go into my time and we say okay we're going to enter the time now so I'm going to imagine that we've got our time sheet from our worker that we're going to enter into the system and add a time entry. It's going to be for 4002. The task is going to be the staff work one and then I'm just going to imagine that from their timesheet I'm going to be putting in the amount allocated to this job 4002, which we're going to say is eight hours, eight hours. And the date here is going to be back in January of uh, January 31st to 31st, let's say. OK, so same thing. Let's save it. And so there it is. So now we've got the time and expenses. Now for the two jobs, I'm going to go back to my projects and look at all the projects and let's go to the jones project and now i've got 800 here on the jones project and 800 on uh, the other project so now let's go ahead and invoice them now note this is kind of similar to using the billable items uh, as well and i was going to put these two things together to having expenses that are billable and pulled over to the invoice but i'm going to break this out into two separate presentations if you're following along with like an excel presentation i might have combined these two journal entries together but i'm just going to track the time here and then we'll look at the billable expenses they can pull into an invoice in a future presentation so let's say i'm in i'm in jones guitars here and now let's say i'm going to make an invoice so i'm going to say all right Let's do uh, an invoice. We're going to say project amount. I'll say open a draft invoice. And so within the invoice, we should have this amount that we can pull in from the hours. And there it is. So it pulled it in automatically. So now I've got Jones Guitars. Let's put the date of this on. Let's make it on January 30th. So I'll bring that back to January 30th. Let's say uh, due date we'll say is is uh february let's say february 28th let's say and then there's the invoice populating reference standard and then it automatically populates the amount down here given what we put in which is one for 800 dollars and the description is pulling in so what's this going to do it's going to increase the uh invoice uh therefore accounts receivable will go up the other side is going to be driven and go into a revenue account driven by this item that has been set up. 
So let's save and approve it and check that out. Complete these fields. It doesn't have a tax uh, or an account field. Notice that this one, what I set up for Jones Guitars, I didn't set up as an actual item and therefore it pulled in, but it didn't populate the actual income account it's gonna go to. On the second one, these should populate properly because we actually recorded them as an item and, and, and then pulled them in uh, to be a billable item uh, for the time entries. So for example, on this one, I'm gonna say this should go to the service revenue account. So service revenue and then tax exempt. So now let's save and approve it. And then I'm gonna to go to the bank account or the balance sheet update. And then in the accounts receivable, we should see this populating in the accounts receivable because we've made just a normal invoice, not dealing with inventory this time, which should make it easier. So now we've got our invoice down below, going back to the balance sheet and then on the income statement, updating the income statement and in the service revenue, we should see the line item in service revenue. If we go into that and scroll down, so there's the 800 there. Okay, let's go back on up and let's do the same thing for the second one, which should be a little bit easier because we set it up as an item. So I'm gonna go back to the first tab uh, before we do, uh, let's go back into the projects, all projects, and look at Jones Guitars now and see what has populated. We've got the invoice uh, that has now populated up top, the time and expenses to be invoiced. We've got the time tracking populated, the quotes and the profitability. What I wanted to note on the profitability is we have the 800 that is now populated, that 800 having been reflected on the income statement. We have the 480, which was populated from that number that we put in, uh, that we're estimating is the what we actually pay our employee or this person as a contractor or an employee. This number is not pulling in or posting to the income statement, but we can kind of assume that it's part of possibly the payroll line item, right? We're kind of pulling in the expenses to estimate per job. So be careful of that uh, when you're trying to tie out these reports to say the income statement. All right, let's go back to the projects up top, all projects, and let's go to Sam the Guitar Man. So now we have the time that we're going to be applying out here, the eight hours for the un-invoiced uh, time. Let's go ahead and, and make an invoice. Let's go back up top and do it. I'll just say project invoice amount 800 so i'm going to open a draft and say all right it's going to go to sam the guitar man let's say this happens at the end of january again january 30th due date let's say it's feb feb 28 or whatever and then now it's pulling in the item and it still didn't pull in even though i used uh an actual item here it still didn't pull in the the uh the account which is interesting so we're going to populate the account over here which is going to be an income account and i'm going to say it's a non-taxable item also notice it didn't even populate an item over here it just used uh it's just used the description that it's populating out so so we could add the item on the left hand side and that would pop that would possibly populate it because we added the item of staff work. So now if I populate staff work, then it'll populate over here and the description will pull in and then that'll properly allocate the account and the tax ex tax status. In this case, we're saying it's exempt from sales tax, which is like a usage tax. And there it goes and that should do the same thing. So that's one little adjustment you could make when, the, when you're billing out the invoice time, you could just select the item related to the, to the time and that will pull that'll pull in the item information if you have it set up as a service item but we'll save i'll approve it and go back to the balance sheet and see this should update again so if we go back on over here then accounts receivable should be going up again ultra vez because it's an invoice and so there uh those two went up sam the guitar man but now i uh, hold on, go back to Sam the Guitar Man. I'm going into that account. When I adjusted it, it made a change. I'm gonna edit it. So be careful of that, because I, I changed it to staff 
and then it changed the quantity back down to one. So that's not something we want to do. I'm going to put it back up to eight because it should be 800. Let's update it. All right, and then I'm going to go down to the accounting reports, or I don't have to go to reports. I can just go straight to the balance sheet, opening the balance sheet back up. And then we're going to say this is going to be the range at the end of 2023. End of it, update. Okay, so now if I go into to not my checking account, but my accounts receivable and scroll down, we should have it properly populated. 800 and 800 for Sam and Jones. Going back up top, income statement. Let's go and update it. And then we've got the service items for those two have been populated now. So we have our two income items. That looks good. And then we have our reports, our internal reports in our projects. So if I want to track by project, we have the data in each of these. If I go to Sam the Guitar Man, our profitability uh, over here gives us like our summary property build, uh, profitability. And then we can run our reports per project. So for example, we have our go to project financial reports here. And that gets us our project report. So we have our project uh, report here for 4002. And so we've got the staff work and the invoice. So I'm going to close that. Well, let's pull that over here. I can also go to my uh, uh, accounting dropdown and into reports and look at the project reports this way. So let's go to project reports and we've got the project detail. Project details, the old version, the time and expenses, uh, project summary and so on. Let's open up a project detail report and take a look at it. Project detail report and let's January to December. We can select the status drop down. We're looking at the in progress items and update the report. And so we have our information down below. So columns, 11 columns selected. So we, we can adjust your columns over here, group by project name. And then you've got your filtering options. And so here's our project detail for 3005 where we have the cost uh, charge amount. So this cost is what we put on the time entry. Remember that that's like an internal kind of number. And then we've got the amount that we charge for 402 and 4005. Let's add another one, duplicate. And let's take a look at another report for the fun of it. Let's go back up top and say accounting reports. We'll type in projects again. So we've got the, let's take a look at the uh, project summary reports. And so we're gonna say the status, let's say in progress status and January, so that looks good. Group by contact, so here's the summary report. So we have, I'm gonna make this a little smaller. So we've got the cost, the charge, the invoice, the uninvoiced amount and uh, the profit. So that gives us a summary. It's not really breaking out, you know, the line items for the amounts of the cost. And remember that this cost isn't exactly a line item on the uh, income statement. So you have to kind of be careful of that when you tie this out to the income statement. Let's do it again. I'm going to right click on this again and duplicate and take a look at another one. And let's go to uh, the accounting drop down up top and reports. And let's take a look at project summary, project financials. Take a look at the project financials. And once again, in progress is what we want to check out. And so that looks good. And so this gives us once again, our cost, the charge amount and the invoiced amount for project 4003 and 4002. So that looks good. I'm going to go back up top and let's take a look at our uh, trial balance accounting drop down and take a look at our reports. And I'm going to type in trial balance. And this is where we stand as of this point in time. Uh, let's change the range up top to a custom range. 2023 end of it. Update. 
So this is where we stand at this point. So if your numbers tie out, great. If not, then try changing the date range. It's also a date range issue. What we changed this time from last time. So if your numbers tied out last time and something is off, it's probably the accounts receivable or and or the service sales line items. So make a double check on those in particular.